Hello to all watching us uh, live or watching us on demand on the Cartridge Club official YouTube channel. Uh, to those unaware of who we are, the Cartridge Club is a community of gamers, collectors, and video game enthusiasts of all ages. As a community, we regularly come together to discuss our favorite games, both modern and retro, movies, and pretty much anything else you could imagine. In addition, we are home to two unique Game of the Month podcasts where community members play along over the span of a month with a few coming together to record a podcast all about that game. Uh, sort of along the lines of a, a book club, but for games. This month, we're playing Axiom Verge and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and we continue to seek out excellent games to play as future game selections. You can check out what games are ahead on our forums over at www.cartridgeclub.org or on our Discord server and join in on the conversation. Today, we are highlighting the E3 2018 press conference for EA. And joining us uh, as our panel, we have Ryan, also known as It's Rocket Sauce. Hello. One of the current hosts of the Cartridge Club Prime podcast and co-founder of the club, P1. Hi, hi. Uh, host of the YouTube channel, Frantic Society, and the Frantic Thoughts podcast, we have Josh. What's up? Uh, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I am Musty Hobbit, host of the YouTube channel Second Breakfast, and we have a bunch in store for you over the days ahead and the breakdown of all the biggest news from each of the E3 press conferences. We realize you could be watching any number of other outlets for this global event, but we want to thank you for choosing uh, for us to break things down for you. Uh, so let's get started with the hottest news out of EA. Uh, we're going to start off like they did with Battlefield V. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started here, guys. Uh, we had known that Battlefield Five or V, uh, was coming. Uh, this was announced uh, a few weeks ago. They kind of had their uh, do this out of necessity and got their word out before they could. Uh, but we heard some new things today. What are your guys' general thoughts? Uh, who wants to kind of jump in and talk a little bit about their thoughts on how they uh, told us more? about this new battlefield game uh i'd like to i'd like to start by talking about uh how they very specifically said that it like a couple of times uh our interpretation of world war ii they said that two or three times you know we're gonna go through our you know, this, you know play through this game with our interpretation of world war ii and that felt kind of like a big f you to all of those uh bigoted chauvinist fans who were complaining there was a woman on the cover citing historical inaccuracies as their reason for being upset and not the fact that it was someone without a dick. Um, and that felt like they were saying, go screw yourself. Uh, we can make whatever game we want, you piece of shit. That's how I felt. I, I felt great about it. Uh, and then they said no loot boxes. And how do you argue with that? Like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's spot on. I, I, I actually didn't, didn't catch that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's pretty spot on. Yeah, there was uh, that was kind of the big noise about this. And so this was kind of their chance to kind of pull back that uh, one thing I wish I get into things that they did or didn't do. They uh, mentioned that there's going to be a fair amount of this stuff shown on the Xbox uh, stage tomorrow. Uh, it was kind of interesting to see that they took, I mean, granted the show itself went longer than I expected. So I guess whatever they have, uh, if they had thrown it into this one, they would have had to cut elsewhere. So uh, although I can think of some areas during the show where they could have potentially cut, uh, We'll get to that later. Um, it's almost like Microsoft doesn't have a whole lot of their own to show tomorrow. And are they, we they starting this already? <laughs> I'm just saying. Mm. That's, it, was know, uh, it was a sign. It was a sign. And uh, Battle Royale mode took six minutes uh, for E3 2019 for our first Battle Royale announcement. Um, the reaction was uh, tepid, I would say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. It was. I was surprised. It, there wasn't even a logo. It, like, it's like they were trying to cut to a logo, but they didn't. Oh, like, yeah. Like, I thought they could turn the V into the top of a Y or something, and it could have said Royale or something, or a big cheeseburger on this on the screen or something. Uh, yeah, so first game announced, first <laughs> Royale announcement. Uh, first of many of this year. Probably. Oh, yeah. And probably was important why they wanted to go first, too, you know, so you can... You don't want to be the butt end of that joke, basically. You don't want to be, like, you know, number six or seven on the list to say, hey, we also have a Royale mode. Yeah. Well, I mean, technically Call of Duty got ahead of him on it, but, um, but yeah, so 
promises though out of this uh ongoing uh story content uh which they sort of highlighted in their reveal video um the royale edition um they did show a uh trailer for their ground ops which is i think they're like that's their story-based multiplayer content if i recall yeah it's all about like the push and pull of the battlefield. That's what they were kind of spinning it as, especially in the original reveal. So, yeah. Yeah. And the two guys they brought out on stage are kind of icons now, right? Like they, they were in that uh, reveal with Trevor Noah and now they're yep. quite, quite popular, quite popular <laughs> guys. Excellent. Um, but yeah, more on that during the Xbox show tomorrow. So we'll look forward. Uh, they did not say that Royale was anywhere near to ready um just said later this year so uh i i have to wonder if that's even going to be ready at launch although as we will probably say a few times you know those games are not meant to be released in a finished uh form anyway so i mean why not just put it out there before we get too far in, I do want to ask you guys what you thought about the general approach to the presentation. This is their third um, EA Play. This is the third time they've done this. Um, who, how'd you think of Andrea doing doing uh, MC duties? Uh, are there anything that, without getting into like the specifics of the little individual announcements, that what would you think of of uh, how it all went? Well, I thought Andrea did amazing. She's always a good host, everything she does. I I think she feels very natural and didn't feel, you know, sometimes you get up there and it's, the host is kind of cringy, like forced. She actually felt pretty good, like she wanted to be there and was excited about the announcements. So, yeah. I think it's kind of tough when you don't have a crowd that's as... Uh doesn't seem as excited as you, the host, are, right? It, yeah. it almost It almost makes the host's enthusiasm feel feel fake but i know i know it's not just yeah, yeah. knowing who she is right it, it felt like nobody who was there wanted to be there you know it was like oh we're here because we have to be let's get on with it is how it felt um, yeah. and it, i think it really i mean i think it sort of took the winner to her sales a little bit but uh it's it's i mean i don't know it felt less awkward of a show this year to me last year felt like there was a little bit more awkward moments um, and I felt like maybe they cleaned it up a little bit. Maybe. Mm. I, think they, I think they tried. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, let's let's shift gears and uh, kick things down the road with FIFA 19 announcement. Um, I did not realize how, like, I know that soccer or football is a global sport. Uh, the numbers that they throw around every year baffle me as to how... Like 20, I, 20 million people. I mean, was it a hundred? They said a hundred countries and or 20 million, countries? 20 million people, 60 countries playing FIFA 19 or 18. Or sorry, FIFA playing 18. FIFA 18. Yeah, like, it's massive. Just, I mean, I, I understand that it's not big in America, so the, how can the rest of the world enjoy it? I get, I get why you don't that's understand, not, Musty. That's, that's no, not what I'm saying. That's I'm not saying, how it comes off I'm at all. Saying that that's... <laughs> it's uh, it's the it's the largest sport on the planet. Um, like it really is, and that's it shows that a America is not the only spot that buys video games, and b Madden's not the only game that sells. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I, I like that they uh, they're doing a free World Cup update to all current consoles that it's on, uh, and I also think it's neat that it's free right now, free trial on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, um, but not on the Switch. And I wonder if that's maybe because of the Switch launched with that lesser version or i wonder if it's something along the it's because it's all through origin and i didn't i didn't look into this before but i don't think you have access to origin on switch so uh i'm thinking that's the reason it's the free trial is not also there because they mentioned that the free trial was through their origin uh program or app or whatever it is that is interesting hmm. i know it's huge you know but i also feel as if this doesn't need to be on their show because it seems like the, the 20 million people who buy this game every year don't tune in for this, if you will. Uh, to me, just come, they're going to buy it regardless. And I didn't see any gameplay footage. I only saw yeah, you know, the, the people who are going to buy Call of Duty are going to buy it regardless, and they still do that on the show. 
And mm-hmm. I, I mean, I guess maybe the main part of having it for the reveal is that they had the um, that they got the Champions League license uh, for it. Yep. Yep. So. It's it's hard for me to get excited for that, like the hype trailers they have. It's just like, oh, it's just a bunch of people. I don't know. I, I can't get excited for it personally, but at least uh, there's an audience for it. So, and this is gonna appease this, you know, the big guys at EA, right? That's all, all, all they're trying to do with these press conferences, right? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I feel like. I feel like the, the 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 soccer crowd, the the FIFA crowd, they might actually like they would enjoy stuff like that. That's a big announcement for them, right? That's you're buying these games because you love that sport. You know, twenty million people. That's a massive. That's more than any other game that they showed on stage today is going to sell. You know, uh, it's probably more than Battlefield sells. So, yeah. it's your it's your biggest plat. It'd be like Nintendo coming out and not showing Mario. You know what I mean? It's your biggest seller. You got to show it, and it's one of the biggest games in the world. So. Yeah, it, makes, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One one uh, absence for this was, uh, and and the same for Madden was no mention of their. Yeah, they, did. S- they did mention Alex, the story. Campaign? Alex, Alex Hunter is returning with Journey. Okay, okay, I missed that. Yeah, they did. They did, and I, I actually wrote it down because they they specifically mentioned it there. But they and they mentioned the one in NBA, but they did not mention. Long shot for Madden, and I was going to bring that up when we get to Madden. Okay. Well, spoiler alert. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, so uh, any other thoughts on on that one before we kind of... No, I mean, it's gorgeous, but I get it. I mean, none of us play really sports games, so I understand we're not excited about it, but that is a massive get for FIFA, um, and it's, it's a big deal for fans of that series. And I know there are people who who are in the club who love soccer to the level that that will get them hyped. Yeah, absolutely. Nips will be hard. (laughs) All right. So moving on from there, again, they mentioned the World Cup uh, additional content for this year's version. Uh, And then uh, the next announcement was Origin Access Premiere, uh, which had sort of a sizzle reel of all the EA uh, properties. This is effectively Game Pass, but for PC games, uh, Origin was already is already its own platform, but this is basically now uh, trying to adopt uh, its own EA access model, which I have to give them credit for because they were out there first. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that sizzle reel had some stuff in there. Ryan, you had you noticed something of importance? I mean, the one thing that stood out to me that stood out that wasn't an EA game was. Arkham or I don't know if which Arkham game exactly was, um, but there was at least one Arkham game in there. So it made me, I guess, like take a look at this. I didn't, I mean, I personally haven't followed the origins too, too much. Um, but I was under the impression that they always, well, this with origins was just EA games. And then I guess they're with doing this, showing it that, that there's more to it than just EA games. That's interesting. I mean, so, I mean, I, I, if anyone else has Origins or have used it before, I'm not a PC gamer. So, um, but did I they, was just. Did they not publish? Did they put like, I, I don't think they published uh, any of the, 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 the traditional Bat Arkham games, but did they do, uh, what was that one that came out that wasn't done by the same team or no, the, Origins or? Those were done, that was done by Warner Brothers Montreal, I believe. Oh, okay. Instead of Rocksteady. Okay. So that was just the one thing it stood out to me um, for for that. Um, I don't know. Do they, don't they have an EA thing for consoles as well? Or they, is do. It, they do. They do. EA, EA Access. I, I I was kind of hoping that this would be a blend of the two because they did announce again their their biggest first part or their biggest EA titles uh, are all going to be on this platform, uh, and they did mention Play First too. So. Uh, they, didn't they, didn't, didn't right. they also mention that this was also going to be more of a cloud based and they're saying like it's not ready quite yeah. yet so yeah it's, it's a streaming service uh they mentioned battlefield 5 and there was three games from today's show that they mentioned and anthem, anthem yep, Battlefield 5 right. anthem as as coming to this it's netflix for ea games and apparently a couple others yeah um it's it's to be expected i, I wish it was more along the game pass model of you download the games as opposed to stream them 
just because I, I don't know if we saw obviously the infrastructure must be there for these streaming services to run properly uh, because PlayStation now still exists. So, yeah. um, well, it's a, it's also a PC streaming service as opposed to a console one. So you're not, maybe you're not throttled as much with uh, bottlenecks. Yeah, on, this is true. Well, they were using cell phones or something there, weren't they? Or was that a, an NVIDIA shield they had? It, it did look like a cell phone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But that is, a, yeah, that's, I don't know. Well, we'll look forward to more information on this, I guess, coming up in the future. But um, it's it's the model we everybody like PlayStation Now came out four years ago, whatever it was, and has been doing streaming service on games, you know, for a, a monthly fee for a while. Um, Xbox has, has recently jumped on with Game Pass where you download them instead of stream them. We've got EA doing it now. Nintendo is apparently going to have something similar with their online service. It's just the, the way that we have. And I think we have Netflix to thank for it. The slow, the slow evolution uh, of a, of a yeah. physical, physical media to an entirely uh, service-based subscription uh, delivery method. Yeah, it's coming. Uh, excellent. Okay, so uh, next up, we we got to hear from uh, Vince Lampella over at Respawn Games. Uh, Respawn has done both the Titanfall games, um, and he had uh, probably about the least expensive announcement out of anything that they did today because there uh, was their uh, rumored Star Wars game, uh, which uh, is has been given a, a name uh, that is Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order, falling between uh, episodes three and four during the dark times when the Jedi are being uh, hunted down. Uh, and it's fantastic. No, amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> His presentation was my second favorite of the whole show. You liked and, it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was like, so is it going to be, you know, a, it's a fun time. And he was like, no, it's a dark time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so she was like, it's going to be super grim and serious. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it, just, it was such <laughs> a great interaction between them because you know that what like that was the that was the one of two real moments. You know what I mean? That they had at mm-hmm. the conference. I really enjoyed it. Um the only way I'm going to get excited about this game is if I am Darth Vader and I am hunting down and killing Jedi. That'd be good. That would that, be cool. That is the game that I want. I want to play as Vader. I want to be hunting down and killing the Jedi. I want to end the Jedi Order. That's that'd what be I pretty want. Cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, Fitnet's going to buy it and play it anyway, so we'll just ask him if it's any good. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I just wish they would have had at least some concept art. That's all I was asking for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything. They gave it a they gave a real cheap Metroid Prime Four teaser for it, if you will. You know, or Metroid yeah. Prime Four. Well, this was, was even. Waved, yeah, even this, was, I said, this is less basically. This, this was this was the this was the Pokemon announcement of you know he's doodling at his desk. Like, Why is there a camera here? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, Pokemon. I'm working at Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, but, no, but I, I want—I want. That's what I want. I want to be Darth Vader, and I want to hunt. I want to massacre the Jedi. It's not going to happen, but who knows? Hey, never know. They could do it. But yeah, so they made the announcement that it is next holiday, meaning holiday 2019, not this year, uh, and that'll accompany the next uh, episode nine, won't it? Oh yeah, makes sense. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe I actually, you know what? I want to change. I don't want to be Vader. Now I want to be a regular person hunting down fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, so with that coming out in tandem with the next uh, the next Star Wars movie, it means that uh, we're probably not getting Battlefront 3 anytime soon. And another indication of that is that there was a fair amount of uh, future planning for Battlefront uh, two here, uh, including the uh, content tying into Solo for next week. Uh, they mentioned some other some other features, uh, including uh, them finally diving into the Clone Wars uh, period of time with additional characters. Um, so, what uh, of any of this excited you guys about what they what they brought up here? Was was. Just to clarify, so was that story mode that they said they were going to do with this, or is it just DLC that for like multiplayer with this content? Which story mode? Uh, for Battlefront Two. So, 
Was it was it just that? I, I guess, I'm, I'm guessing I, the guess I, I guess I don't know what the solo content is. A lot of it just looked like char- like a character pack and mm. and maybe some uh, a new level because they said that they were doing one based on Kessel. Uh, I didn't I didn't catch any story content. Just that the that they added a they're adding a squad system, which I think just lets you better party up with your friends when you're playing. Uh, there was a starfighter mode, so it actually allowed dogfighting um, with uh, like the you know heroes ships and stuff like that. Um, but a, a, a lot of that content is centered around. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they gave anything about story based off the like extension of the existing story. No, they they said it was multiplayer DLC. Yeah, yeah. but they. They kind of fell on the sword a little bit. Um, yeah, they, they came out and apologized. Like, hey, we launched Battlefront last year. We know we sort of effed it up. Um, oops. But we're going to make it better. You know, and then later on, they said, even though we messed up the launch, we you know, there's a lot of legs left in this game, and we really want to make it into the game that you want it to be. I thought that was nice. You know, they came out and they acknowledged the fact that they screwed up. It takes a – accountability is a massive thing uh, that is missing in a lot of avenues today. And I liked that they did acknowledge that. You know, they goofed. And I think that's also partially why they were so quick to say no loot boxes with uh, Battlefront 5. Sorry, Battlefield 5. And I think it's also why Anthem talks about what they talk about when we get there. Yeah. EA, like, I mean, their microtransactions aren't going anywhere. They're, they're here forever. But it's nice to see that they appear to have learned the lesson of maybe making people pay for random surprises that they need beat a game or to be better at a game is a shitty thing to do. Yeah. Or try a different way of rebranding it. The name for it. I mean, it's all, yeah, it, it is all, a lot of it is messaging. Um, and, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that uh, a little bit later. There was some actual phrasing used later in the show that I think is an attempt to kind of rebrand some of this uh, a little bit. So yeah, is there no other no other thoughts on Battlefront Two? Anyone gonna go pick it up now that they've said this stuff is coming? I still want to play it, um, but I don't. I'm still like not in a rush to play it, if you will. Sure. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure there'll be somebody out there who wants to play it with uh, with people, uh, and and maybe this additional surge of content would be a way to do that. But. Uh, yeah, I, it sounds like they're planning at least for another year's worth of content, um, which is, I mean, it's kind of them starting that's, things over again. Uh, yeah, anyways. Um, I was going to say that's kind of like a, almost a different sign for the, for them a little bit. It seems like most more of, the, more of the time they just keep next year, next game, you know, as opposed to like, I can't believe there wasn't a, a teaser for Battlefront 3, if you will, you know, but yeah, yeah, they're sticking with they're sticking with it and trying to fix, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. their mess. Well, and they very they very easily could have said all this Clone Wars stuff is going to be in the third game and start planning for that. But no, they're 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 making good on on what people are asking for, or at least what it seems like people are asking for, uh, and breaking out uh, Grievous, Obi Wan, Dooku, and Anakin. So Hayden Christensen will grace our TV screens once again. Great, <laughs> hooray! Good. Okay, uh, so. Next up, there were a couple of titles. So last year, uh, A Way Out was the EA Originals uh, title that was revealed. We got to meet Joseph Ferris for the first time, uh, and they even brought him up and his antics at the uh, at the Game Awards. I'm surprised nobody in the crowd yelled it out because um, it was quiet enough that they probably could have. Uh, but they showed off two games, uh, and the first of which is a sequel. Uh, to a game I think it was maybe two years old at this point. Um, I think this game is going to be up a couple of our panels uh, in their wheelhouse. So I I, I think I want to get Josh's thoughts first on, on this game. Okay. Uh, I ha- actually haven't played the original, so I'll just start off by saying that. But I don't know. I love these little indie platformy games and, you know, touching storylines and I'm I'm a little softy when it comes to that kind of stuff. So um, I, I do like the presenter, that that developer. They brought him out the first time, and he actually started crying. He had the original Yarny and everything. And, uh, yeah, it's um, 
looks really fun too. I, I like the concept of working with a teammate and um, or you know somebody, a partner or somebody, or you can work by yourself. They were showing that off. Um, I do think the gameplay demo was a little awkward, but I mean it was kind of charming because it was awkward. But the game does look like a lot of fun, and I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, playing it with Sierra. And uh, yeah, sorry, I just no. If, yeah. So P P P one, I I I saw this one and immediately thought that you and Colleen would probably enjoy yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so Colleen spent everything up to this point of the show making fun of Andrea Rene and the host or the presenters and the games and saying how boring it was and she painted their toenails and she said, "Why are you watching this? This is garbage." And then this trailer came on and she turned around and she looked at me and she said, uh, whenever this comes out, we need to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I said no, um, because uh, I'm pretty sure we'll kill each other if we, if we play that game together. Um, we can't play through uh, the, the new Super Mario Bros without having a fight. Um, so uh, maybe. And then they came out and I was like, you know what? We'll see. Maybe when I get home, when it comes out. And then they came out on stage and they were like, it's out today. And I'm like, yeah. you mother effers <laughs> thanks ea <laughs> uh yeah she she thought it was adorable she really wants to try it um so we'll probably uh, i don't know man that, that's got to be a post deployment thing when i'm de-stressed and that's not a uh that's not a yeah that's we're gonna kill each other that's you kidding me like now mark and megan i could see them playing it because mark has the patience of job he is like he is so calm and relaxed and he just he can go along whatever pace Megan needs to go at. I don't have that. I get I get frustrated, you know, because I see it and it's like, just do this, just do this. You're not doing this, just do this. Colleen forgets where the buttons are. She was playing Bayonetta the other night and she was literally in a boss fight singing along. I'm just mashing buttons. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what she was doing, was mashing. So yeah, she wants it, she wants to play it together. So we we very likely will. That's how decisions go around here. We compromise and do whatever she wants. Um <laughs> But uh, I see. I think this game would be fun to watch two people who are good at it live stream it. I think that would be great. Like, I would a, really like speed run stuff. Yeah, yeah. Watching yeah. that, that'd be awesome. Uh, Colleen and I will kill each other. That'll be it'll it will end in homicide. <laughs> yeah, I was really nervous. There was a one part at the end where they were jumping on those like single wide uh, little little stakes. Uh, I was super nervous that one of them was going to miss it. Uh, there was a couple. There was a couple little cool moments in there but um yeah quite the surprise we already have a shadow drop uh actually too with the the fifa announced or fifa demo that's not really a big as big a surprise as hey our game that you just heard about now uh is here so ryan thoughts on unravel 2 um i still want i wanted to play the first one a while back i just kind of forgot about it and it's kind of uh yeah i guess this is one of those things where it looks like EA's version of um, we call it a uh, little big planet, if you will, and maybe it's just because the name is Yarn Boy um, with the co-op. Because I believe there's co-op with that one too, where you can, you know, have two people help each other out. So it mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of that in more of a real world environment. Um, looks interesting. Uh, not a day one pickup, but still, it's at least I think makes me want to go back and maybe try the first one out. Yeah. Seems like seems like EA or not EA, but E three in general has a habit of kind of stringing people along and sort of reminding us that there were games that that were out a couple of years ago that you'd forgotten about. Um, Unravel certainly wasn't on my radar, and then I I saw this morning that the ESRB had rated it, which you know, as with things, they get they get revealed. Um, so this just confirmed that it it wasn't uh, soul crushing or anything to me. Um, but yeah, definitely exciting. Uh, and then they came out and announced another one uh, out of a uh, from a, a uh, studio out of Germany uh, called Sea of Solitude, which uh, looks interesting. They didn't really give us a ton of gameplay. There was a cinematic at the end uh, of the talk, but she kind of did some world building with regards to that. Uh, who wants to kind of voice uh, Josh? You want to talk about Sea of Solitude? Yeah, so I really like the um, the animation and the style, and 
of course i i like the developer too i she was kind of like awkward but quirky i don't know i i, I just love that when they bring real developers on there who are passionate you can kind of really see it in their eyes like i love this thing i'm making which is cool to see and um i don't know i just i like that uh the way it had a somber feel to it of course that's kind of the tone of this the game but um, I'm looking forward to seeing what it is. And that type of adventure game is just right up my alley. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Yeah. Ryan, Sean, is, is yeah, this, Sea of this, Solitude? Yeah, this is beautiful. I think it's going to be like a, a journey, Abzu, you know what I mean? Sort of uh, walk around, explore experience. I don't think it's going to, I don't think you're, gonna, you're not going to see a lot of combat. You're not going to be fighting these monsters, I don't believe. Uh, you're going to be solving puzzles, figuring things out on how to make yourself happy, essentially. Um, especially after, the, you know, the news yesterday and uh, mental illness and depression and all this stuff. So, so prevalent out there. Not, not a lot, not enough people talking about it. Um, for her to come on stage and the, her moment on stage was my favorite moment of the conference because that was like, a, a, like that real emotion. You know what I mean? Like, I feed off of that real emotion. Um, and she is just like, you could see it in her. And even she said, she was like, when we first had our meeting with Patrick and he came in and he had all these great ideas, you know, or all this, all these great offers and how excited we were then. And I could just imagine her whole dev team crying because I don't imagine it's not a massive studio. I don't imagine. And then yeah. she's on stage there at E3, like you're a game developer and now you're on stage at EA's press conference at E3. That is a dream come true. And that, you know, her and her emotion sort of sucks me into it. I saw some snark on, on uh, Twitter, you know, about, oh, people can't understand what you're saying or uh, things like that, things along those lines, you know, calm down. Like, yeah, uh, first of all, she's translating from a second language. So let's see you do that, asshole. And uh, then <laughs> and then secondly, um, she's super pumped because this is like her Super Bowl, you know what I mean? And she's there. Uh, so I, I, I'm excited. The game looks good. It's beautiful. Uh, I think the art style is great. Um, I will definitely grab this and, and try it out when it comes out. Uh, and something I didn't know about EA Originals um, – is that what it's called? Yeah, EA Originals. These indie indie games that they they publish, they don't make money from them. Um, a lot of Pierce did a tweet earlier that in the middle of the conference. You know, she said that EA doesn't actually make money off of the EA Originals. So I don't know how they do them or why they do them. Maybe it's, it's just a goodwill thing, or maybe they do that, and if it's good, then they sign a, a team up to do other work. Maybe that's what it it's is. Kind maybe. of a, it's like a, a, like a test an program. Indie. Yeah, but they don't make money off of it. So. Go out and support these teams. Get a way out. Get you know, Unravel. See, Unravel 1, they probably was probably yeah. the original. Because Unravel was. 2 was not an original. They didn't right. say they didn't they didn't say Unravel 2 was announced. Then they started talking about EA originals. So the first one was probably an original. This one I imagine is is fully published by them. I imagine they're making money off the sequel. Um maybe these, that's maybe that's how they make their money is they let the first game and then the second one, this one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, but go out and grab these games, support these small indie studios, because these are the people that are making games that are different, that are, that are you know, they're not making generic gray-brown first-person shooters and racing games and sports games. They're making fun, different experiences, and we need mm -hmm. to support these people as, as much as we can. And this game looks great. Um, I'm going to check it out. And anybody, any, yeah, just check it out. Grab this game. It's going to be fun. It's only going to be 40 bucks, so. Probably, right. yeah. You spend it, more, more on, on less. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it, it it does have a lot of like a Campo Santo kind of aesthetic. And granted, we've only seen Firewatch out of Campo Santo, but that the color uh, scheme, at least when it was very bright and colorful, before it got kind of that uh, that darkness that kind of set into that, which it again is all very thematic. Um, it lo it looks very interesting. Uh, I'm compelled to see more. So. Uh, hopefully we get more on that soon uh, and we can uh, move on from there. Uh, next up was kind of a, uh, a stretch into a couple of, they, they threw out the EA Sports logo um, and they hit us with, uh, with a very street-based NBA game. Uh, <laughs> and I know we were all probably hoping for the... One of these days, EA is going to bring back the big um, EA Sports big, uh, their, that little sub moniker, uh, and, and I think it's going to make a lot of people happy. But uh, Ryan, you you had some thoughts on, on what it was that we, we were potentially seeing here? My honest reaction was I thought, oh boy, NBA Streets is coming back. And I'm not trying to be snarky or anything. I love NBA Streets. I think it's a fantastic sports game. It's kind of 
got a little bit of the NBA jam feel to it. It's really very arcadey. Um, I enjoy it. I love that series. And then they kind of just pulled back that it's um, live 19. The NBA live is kind of making a comeback. And that's disappointing to me a little bit because it just probably is going to be the same system, but with on, um, I guess the street court as opposed to being inside an arena. So uh, that's, that's si- the- it'll be a side mode on it. Uh, yeah. You know, on top of standard and, mode. Yeah. And to me, that's, to me, that's deflating um, a little bit. Cause I, I enjoy the very arcadey sports games. Uh, NBA streets one and two are fantastic. I, for how cheap they are. I, I still recommend people go pick those up because they're, they're good for, you know, the two, three dollars they cost to pay for it. Did you grab uh was it NBA, NBA Playground? Is that the one that came out with the two V two that mm-hmm. was out? Did you grab that, Ryan? Because that by all accounts is supposed to be quite fun. No, I didn't. I was not aware of that. No. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's the that's yeah. the NBA jam looking kind mm-hmm. of uh arcadey over the top, like jumping way high for dunks mm-hmm. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you should you should look into that. I think it's on, you know, the the three majors. Um definitely on Switch. Uh, but you should look into that because I think it might be, especially if you like the arcade style, that's from last year. So you can probably find it dirt cheap somewhere too. Sure. Uh, actually, it might be digital only. So maybe a PlayStation flash sale or something. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then from, you know, we get, we get our NBA and we get, uh, we get one of uh, EA's biggest sports franchises, uh, not quite to the level of FIFA, but not far behind. And that's Madden. Um, so Madden 19 got shown off uh, with, as brought up earlier, an omission of long shot or what long shot, uh, uh, or maybe the evolution of long shot um, was not in there. So uh, it was kind of a disappointment to me because I, I enjoyed that mode. It makes me wonder how much, uh, how many people actually played it. Yeah, I think uh, it's a missed. Uh, Madden 18 was the first Madden. I, I I bought every Madden from 93 to 2006, 2007. Wait, no, what what year is Peyton Hillis? 2011. 11 was Hillis, yeah. Okay, yeah. I so I bought I every you're right. I bought every Madden from 1993 to 2011, um, and then I stopped, and I didn't buy another one until 18. And Long Shot was my favorite part of it. If 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 Madden 19 doesn't have that single player story mode, I probably won't get it. I don't think I'll need it. Yeah. Did uh But but they did show the esports side of it, right? Yeah, so that was Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's and not the rig on the guy who was the champion, but he came off kind of douchey in the Oh uh, man, I chased the money. Yeah. Chased the money. <laughs> I, I, I don't like winning as much as I love I hate losing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You can't you can't be on an EA press conference and use the phrase I chased the money. <laughs> and, and to be honest, the uh, mm. he came off when he was talking with the wide receiver for the Steelers. Yeah, he came off like he was trying to read a script or memorize a script because he changed what he said, like he was reading a different sentence. Um, yeah, it's so like that was a little off putting, basically. That was not, I guess, quirky in a, a fun way, that was more yeah. of a lame, you know. He did, you're right, he, he seemed like a douchebag. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I'm I'm, gra- I'm glad you won the Madden Challenge. It's awesome. I'm proud of you. Uh, I skipped my graduation to play. I yeah. skipped my graduation for a tournament. Yep. You got paid. Uh, <laughs> any kids who are watching this, that's not the message to take away from this. Go to your graduation. You're only going to get one. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, he just came off like a, a massive d bag. Um, so I'm looking forward to watching him lose this year. <laughs> well, it's you know you now have yeah you now have rooting interest in the Madden yeah. the Madden Cup or whatever yeah. whatever they're calling it. Actually, what it did was make me go. They're probably all just like that, and I will now. It's guaranteed I will never watch one now. Yeah, it, <laughs> it definitely sets sets the stage for um you know making you think of this guy is like it. I imagine everyone in this league is like it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And way to get a fourth string receiver to come out on stage with yeah. you. No <laughs> kidding. What is, he's, he's he's going into his second year, right? I had to google him. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. He, he's the one who like he like lost his bike, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah. Like can you imagine like you're going to be on stage with a wide receiver from the Steelers? Is it Antonio? No. Oh. <laughs> Is it Bartavis Bryant? Or he's traded now, but he would have been there last year. No. Yeah. Uh, who is it? 
Joel Schumacher? What's his name? Who? No. <laughs> Ju- 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 who? Ju- Ju- Juju Schuster. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean. I want to say to who? If it was the, hey, if it was the Xbox press conference, there would have been a bigger personality there. You're right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there might still be, because we're. I'm sure we're going to see Madden at the Xbox show, because mm-hmm. they're certainly not showing Crackdown. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for tomorrow. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah. okay, well, great here, fire. here, you know what? I have a great way to shut up P1. Let's talk about Command and Conquer. Ooh, <laughs> the highlight of the show. The best part. So so they they decide to come out, and, I, and the, uh, we, we're in the first press conference, and we already have a shout. The person who identifies as a shoutcaster. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, that was already, like, I was already rolling my eyes. I'm like, what is this? Uh, and then they bring out two guys with, holding cell phones, to play a what is effectively an RTS, and so th- that game looked boring to me. I I'm sure there was something to it, but uh, in the end, they end up shadow dropping the name. We're going to use shadow drop a lot over this weekend, so if you're not familiar with that term already, learn something. Uh, it's when uh, you're carrying my dog and you accidentally she slips out of your arms. There you go. That's right. <laughs> The uh, the big thing that that came out of uh, this though is that this is the new evolution of the Command and Conquer series, Command and Conquer Rivals, which is going to be on mobile. Um, the game is in pre-alpha right now, which means like, hey, we put some things together uh, enough enough that we can show you a match. Um, do you guys have any thoughts on this? I was shocked to see a mobile game on the EA stage. Not only that, I'll but go for that. it to go that long of a that was that was a long demo for it to go on stage. Uh, it was very it, to me it really you know pulled it to this this show to an a, a, almost a stopping point. Or you know, I left and got a drink of water because I I was bored. This is you know I imagine the people in the audience had it worse. You know, I'm really at home and comfortable. These people can't leave. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's gonna kill your phone battery too. It's, it seems like that was a long <laughs> demo, you know, the play, and you know, I guess if you have a really long transportation to work, you know, and you can pull out your phone or, but to me that this was a really a missed opportunity. Command and Cocker Bathroom Edition. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was noticing is that demo was as long as the Anthem demo is, pretty much. See that's that's unfortunate. That's really yeah. unfortunate. Uh, I mean, it's them trying to get serious about something, right? I mean, like it's not Konami making pachinko machines; they're actually playing a video game. Uh, but and hey, the their mobile market, I bet you makes a lot of money too. So I'm sure. it, it does. EA actually has a very lucrative mobile market. Um, they have teams all over uh, North America working for their mobile side. And uh, they, they do, some of their games are fun. And this might be fun, but you know what? Playing it might be better than watching two dudes tap a screen and listening to some jag off I... talk about these dudes tapping a screen. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Um, it, this was a bad way to sell that game, I think. Also, they made the right move in putting that wicked trailer after the gameplay. Because if you'd show me that trailer first, and then show me these guys tap it on their screen. I would have been like, take me back to show me the trailer again. Take me yeah. down. I'm going to play that game. I do. I do. <laughs> the, tra- the cinematic trailer they showed at the end was a console or PC game to me. Like, yeah, that, I, I wanted that. I wanted that. If you would have told me this is the new Command and Conquer. And oh, by the way, uh, here's our version of Fallout Shelter. Here's this mobile version that we're putting out too. Like, if you'd given me that in tandem with a with a console version of a new Command & Conquer game, then I think this would have gone off a little bit better. But to make it seem like, hey, we're going we're gonna to show this to you and we're going to treat it like it's a sport in the process and we're going to have some goofy announcer come yell about it for a little bit. Um, we've already talked about it more than I think we need to unless you guys have any final thoughts or comments you wanted to make before we get to the, uh, the meat of the show. Or the prime rib of the show. Let's call it that. Yeah, uh, it's more of a fast fry steak, I think. For Anthem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So, 
this was one of the big titles that I was kind of super hyped for. Uh, and they, I, I, I know you were too uh, coming out of last year. So, so hit me with it. Uh, they, I, so I was very excited coming over last year, like edge of my seat, ready to go. Give it to me now, put it in my veins. Uh, and then somewhere around the midpoint of last year, that started to wane a little bit. Um, and I don't know what caused it. I can't pinpoint it, but it started to fade away, whether it was my experience on Sea of Thieves or, you know, the sort of interest loss and in destiny that we had. Um, somewhere around the midpoint, I started to wane. And I went from I'm a day one to – now I'm going to have to wait and hear some some serious reviews on this game before I pick it up. And then, so they came out and they did. They said a lot of things right. You know, uh, you can change your class at any time. You just got to get it in a different mech suit, essentially. And then you can play as whatever class you need to play as. That helps for, for team matching, for team making. It helps for when people are bored. It also provides you with a reason to have to go out and grind over and over again for those same materials that you need. Because level one of suit A is going to be the same stuff you need for level one of suit B and the same stuff you need for level one of suit C and the same stuff you need for level one level one of suit D. I'm going to have to grind through all that for all of them to get them all up there. So there's my replayability hook. Um, they said, uh, you know, um, it's single player story inside the hub and multiplayer adapting, changing world outside the hub. And in theory, that sounds great, but there's going to be an immersion break there. And that's a problem for me when I leave. I don't want to feel like I'm playing two different games. I want to feel like I'm playing the same game. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles X, I think, did it well. Hopefully, they can do it as well as that. I fear that they made two separate games and stuck them together, um, especially considering one of them is third person and one of them is first person. <laughs> um, your first person inside the walls, your third person outside the walls. A uh, couple of good things. Um, uh, the... The no, no loot boxes, microtransactions, yes, but for cosmetic only. So that's good. So I'm not going to have to pay for item A. Yeah, know, there's no, there's no random. Items. Yeah, they said no random content, right? You 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 can yeah. buy things, but you know what you're buying. And and they did say it's cosmetic only. They said you will not yeah. be able to increase your ability in the game anyway. Uh, did you notice as they were flipping through the paint jobs, there was an N7 paint job? I did. I, I, I did see that. I, was, I, I saw that. Um, that was nice. Uh, February 22nd, that's also nice. It's a good time for it to hit because it's a slow time. That's when Fire Emblem Awakening came out, and I fell in love with that game because there was nothing else around it. So isn't this the same day as Days Gone? Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's yeah. fair. Who cares? That's fair. Who cares? I mean, you just said this was a fillet steak, or I feel, yeah. <laughs> if, I feel if this is a if this is a if this is a fillet steak, days gone is fried chicken. Yeah. It's uh I'd rather um, eat fried chicken than fillet steak. Yeah. Um uh, and the, the Owen, the that had to be an AI because as he was talking, I would first. Uh, so there's no cheesy dialogue. They they completely cut that out. Yeah. It seemed, mm -hmm. uh, but that Owen talking to you was had to be an AI system it inside was. your inside your javelin. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, but I just the 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 way that they said, and we can add extra story content ever afterwards. You're gonna there's going to be a disconnect. It's gonna feel like two completely different games, and it's I just. Knowing that you can change your suit at any time and knowing how MMOs work, this game is going to be full to the brim of boring, shitty fetch quests. Go out and get me 19 of these horns. Go out and get me 20 of these pieces of steel. Go out and find 30 of this cog. And it's it's Warcraft was that way when you had to craft things, and it fucking sucks. And if this game is that way, I'm, I'm out. I'm still excited. Me too. <laughs> I, I I liked the look. I liked the interceptor, the style on that uh, on that javelin suit. Uh, it was very sort of uh, like current era, like transformer style, like that kind of very sleek looking. Uh, and they didn't show much, so they they brought up the storm, which is so. There's there's four different javelin, right? You have your Hunter, your Colossus, your uh, Interceptor, and the the Storm, which it right they call it the Storm, which is their like equivalent of a Destiny Warlock. Um, it seems like they they uh, hover. They have probably uh, magic or elemental style attacks. Uh, they didn't show much of that character at all. Uh, it just makes you wonder if they just they want to hold something back so that they have something to wow us with over the next couple months. Um, because they're going to have to keep the 
enthusiasm going. Um, it's one thing that by not releasing in this calendar year, they get away from a lot of the stuff that's, you know, a known commodity that they're going to, that they won't have to compete against. Uh, but they're going to have to find a way to, to, to drive that, that hype. And, um, I'm hoping by ba- you know, based on who they were able to get on, on stage to talk, um, you know, I, I, I never imagined that Casey Hudson wouldn't be the one talking about the game. It's interesting that he, he was there at pre-production or like early production, then left and came back, um, uh, for the same game, which is, uh, I don't, I have faith until they, until they prove me otherwise. I, I, I guess I, like they, it's a, it's a new IP so they can, they can do whatever they really want to with it. But, uh, I just hope it's good. I just hope it's good. I I know how I know how these games work, and it's it's going it, the, like the if you go and watch that full gameplay demo because they mentioned it was all cut up, which I thought was kind of a bummer. I wanted to see it play out the whole way, uh, and I might go and watch it. It's probably a twenty minute mission they run. Uh, I might watch that end to end after this, but uh, those kind of things those are cool. Those are going to be awesome. But for you to have four different suits. Unless you pick one suit and that's your suit, like you're going to have to build those suits up. You're going to have to level them up and it's not going to be just experience points and it's not going to be shared. Each suit's going to have its own and it's going to be those shitty grindy fetch quests. I know it is. And that is going to severely hamper the experience. Sure. Okay. Josh, is Anthem, Anthem doing anything for you? Yeah. I love the art style. I love the environments and, the suits definitely gave me a Destiny vibe, the four classes. Um, I like how they're doing the microtransactions. That's cool. I feel like that's a trend that's going to... They're just going to say no loot boxes. Like That's going to be a trend this whole E3, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's kind of like over and done with, especially after all the stuff last year with that. And um, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope a lot of like the club gets into it because I actually think that's going to be a good time if we can get like a whole crew and go do some crazy missions, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I kind of, I kind of feel like I'm between the two of you guys, like you're excited and P one's not as excited because of the fetch quest. So I'll probably wait for reviews and, but if everybody jumps in, I'll, I'll buy it. I'm sure I will. But uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of fun and I, I kind of more interested in the more heavy suit that they were showing. I just think it looks really cool. And I like that style. It kind of reminds me of Armored Core. I used to love playing Armored Core as a kid. So it's kind of like brought that up for me. And I was like, you know, I'm into it. I'm, I'm into the universe. I think it's going to be cool. Breaking out that big Gatling gun and have it kind of expand into the final gun. Like that. That's, yeah. That's, it's, uh, that's cool. It looks yeah. really, really cool. And I, it looks fast paced. I, I love shoot, loot shooters in general. That's probably one of my favorite genres, honestly. I love Borderlands yeah. and stuff like that. And, um, just seeing the numbers pop up in, means I'm like, okay, I, I, I feel it. I'm, I'm in, you know, pretty much. So yeah, I felt, I felt bad though. So the, the hunter and the, the Colossus were hitting with like, you know, hundred and something, uh, and like I think the Colossus had had a few attacks that were like two hundred plus, and then the interceptor was peppering that turret and it was like one, 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 one. That's like, true. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like bummer. Uh, I, li- I liked the trailer. Um, I liked the. Uh, the Muse uh, remix that they did with the the gun effects, I thought I thought that was that that was a nice touch. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, that approach to talking about the game, I guess it's a it wasn't a, a a global reveal like you know world premiere type thing. So you know you didn't get your like hard hitting. You had your trailer. You had this sort of this round table. Uh, talk when they fielded questions off of Twitter, which was nice. I, I mean, they could have written those questions themselves, but they decided to just allow somebody to have their name tied to those questions. Uh, and then they went back with an actual gameplay demo. I, I'm interested to see if this is how other uh, developers or other people handle their press conferences is, is with this kind of uh, sandwich of cinematic talk uh it's the whole edition. sony show is going to be that that's going to be uh, it's kind of yeah. what i was leaning toward yeah yeah um here's a trailer here's a nap here's some gameplay here's... <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Nice. Ryan, you you're not a destiny guy. What do you, what do you think about Anthem? Is this is this uh, scratching any kind of itch for you, or is this? Um, no, it's I'm I guess interested, but this is definitely not a day one for me. It's more of a wait and see approach to it for me, sure. um, to see where it goes from here. Uh, I completely see what P1 when he says you know these boring fetch quests because I can see it right there in the tra- you know the gameplay, um, but. I'll, I'll give it this. The world looks beautiful, and I love the idea of just flying around like jetpacky like that. To me, that looks like a lot of fun flying mm-hmm. around and shooting stuff. Um, I I don't like. I know they were showing all this customization. I hate customization in games. I hate it because it you know it it takes away from like a character. I, I'll give the example, just the basic example of Mario. You know, you know what Mario looks like. I'm not gonna go to I guess a convention and see someone. I guess cosplay i'm gonna be like what the hell are you you know like that's when it's when it's, the game's all customization i hate it i absolutely hate it it's to me it takes i understand it gives people originality but to me it's like you lose kind of like the look of the game when your character doesn't match you know you know when it's completely different for everybody i hate that i'm sorry so mark um, hates it mark hates it too it's uh and especially in RPGs, where this is sort of setting itself up as a as a massive RPG, um, you lose character building uh, in the game. You know, uh, you go through, you play Final Fantasy VII, you know who Cloud is, you mm-hmm. live Cloud's story. But if you logged into Final Fantasy VII and you could make whoever you wanted, you don't live Cloud. Suddenly, that changes. You know what I mean? You lose some of that. Exactly, um, and that's yeah. what I'm that's what I'm talking about. I I hate that when the, a whole game is just that. I hate it, um, and it seems like that's what's going to be. Um, I do think the release date to February is smart um, because you give a game like this, if this is your big hitter, you give it a little bit more time to, to bake, um, less competition in February. And um, if you look prior to like 20, you know, if you look back to 2017, when games were coming out in February and March, you're still a chance, you know, potential chance for, you know, game of the year. Um, you're, it's, you get less competition, if you will. You know, it's if your game is that good, people are going to continuously play it throughout the year. And it seems like they wanted to keep adding expansion packs to it, like Destiny has. Like Destiny, like would release their game, and then you know, so many months down the road, here's another expansion pack for forty dollars. You know, and they can keep adding on and on to it, more mm-hmm. story, more different missions. So, like you know, like they can do that throughout the year. Basically, they could say, okay, well, next EA, well, we released this game back in February. Here's the second expansion for this game, or you know, and there's more to come. So I imagine next year at their EA conference, there'll be another expansion pack for it. So, yeah. Well, hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping they can take some of the hints from because I, I I know Destiny's uh, approach has not been totally well received. It sounds like they're, they're they're starting to kind of get there, which is strange because they're into game two of, of that series. Uh, Hopefully they can take some clues from the stuff that's being said about that and make uh, this similar experience into something that doesn't have to learn those things itself um, is kind of what I'm hoping. So, Cool. Um, any other final thoughts on Anthem and, and the conference in general? I think I granted EA has they're one of the bigger developers. I still think they could probably go away from this completely. Um, with Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo, um, I think they can get almost all their message. Even the PC show, they can get all the message off. When they said Madden returned to, you know, first time returning back and I forgot how many years to PC. I think that would have been a big thing for the PC show. Um, so I really think they're kind of throwing money away um, with these conferences. Now it's their money. I, who, why do I care? Uh, I'm just saying this. I think they could do without this show. Um, I think they could capitalize more working with the other main press conferences, if you will. I, I agree 100%. I think it actually makes E3 better for them not to have their own show because suddenly Microsoft is more exciting. Sony is more exciting. Nintendo is more exciting. PC has three people show up. Like This is... Um, them doing their own show steals a lot of thunder. Like, imagine if if Sony was able to come on stage and go unravel two, you know, yada yada yada. It's available today. Get it now. You know what I mean? Xbox comes on stage and they say, you know, uh, 
FIFA, we got the we got the World Championship Cup, or the World, the UEFA Cup, or uh, you know Anthem. They do you know they because they had the big Anthem push last year. They have it again. They come out and they say no loot boxes. Give these announcements to those guys. I don't. I, I agree with Ryan. I don't think EA yeah. needs their own show. I mean, they even kind of did a little bit with the Xbox scene. We'll see tomorrow with tomorrow. Yeah. Just give me yeah. all of that at Xbox, then. I don't need you to yeah. show me a cinematic trailer for five minutes talking about this. Just give it to yeah. me tomorrow with the That's trailer and stuff. So. And maybe maybe that this will be a common question that we kind of ask uh, over the next week because I think there's a lot of question right now as far as what need there is for E3, right? At this point, E3 is a two-week event where things trickle out over the span of, you know, nine days or so, and then there's like five days of stuff. Um, and so, you know, I, I was initially thinking you were going to say that EA doesn't need it. They could just adopt the release news when they have news uh, approach, but I, I think you make a very good point that uh, if you if you spread that over over everything, suddenly the toast is better across the board. Yeah, right. like I mean, outside of Nintendo, it's not like Sony and Microsoft have have you know ninety minutes worth of first party games to come out there and show. Nobody does outside of Nintendo. They're the only company that can go out there and for and and even they're like, uh, we're you know what? we're gonna do forty five. We're good. Forty five minutes is good for yeah. us. You know, and ironically, we tune into their shows more to see what third party titles are getting, you know, than their first party. So it's kind of a backwards, but um, like, so even Sony with their massive lineup, lineup of games and, you know, how great their games are, even they, they're announced, they have to announce games four years out because they can't fill the show. You know what I mean? They talked about Kingdom Hearts 3 and Shenmue and Final Fantasy 7 three years ago, you know, like, because they didn't have enough games on their, like, EA, I don't want to say it's selfish, but they don't need to have their own conference and, Especially seeing how that crowd reacted, fuck those guys. I wouldn't put on a show for those people. Are you kidding me? Yeah. If, if, if I went out there to talk and everybody sat there and barely engaged and had no excitement, you know, one guy was like, "Yeah, Ravel two today." Yeah, that's one <laughs> guy I remember getting. Like, <laughs> you know, like the, guy, the Madden PC <laughs> guy too. Yeah, they like yeah. Oh, Madden PC. He's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> Woo, <it's gone> down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, fuck those people. Let the Give these announcements to the other companies who need the help, who need that boost. You know, maybe then we don't get thirty minutes of here's a Porsche. You know, um, you know. We so, don't so these are these are all interesting thoughts. I think we should transition <laughs> into uh, so tomorrow's the the next show that we will do is for uh, is to follow Microsoft's presentation, uh, which is Microsoft's presentation is tomorrow at four o'clock Eastern uh, Daylight Time. Uh, and that uh, they're estimating based on run throughs about a hundred minutes on that show, which means it will probably go on at about five forty Eastern Daylight Time, uh, or roughly thereafter, just a few minutes after. So I want to get thoughts from the panel. I want to get uh, hopes or predictions. It can be one or either of those things. Uh, it could be a little bit of both if you want. If you have something that you hope happens that you're also predicting will happen. Um, that's fine with me as well. But uh, I just want to get some things out there to kind of have us thinking going into tomorrow. Uh, and we'll do this with each of the individual shows. So we'll always close out a show talking about what's coming up next. So I want uh, a prediction or a hope. We'll start with P1, prediction for the Microsoft show. I predict that we see no more than two first-party Microsoft games. No more than two first party. No more than two. And no if, if any more than that do get announced or do get mentioned, it's to say that they've been delayed or canceled. You think that they would actually announce a cancellation <laughs> within the within the show? Right. <laughs> Maybe. I'm not putting it past them. But. No more than two. We're going to see two. We, we will see no more than two, and Twitter will be a buzz with where are the Hold games. on. Hold on. Two new First party games or just two first party two. games in general? Two first, there will be two games shown on the stage that are not third party games. Okay. Two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Um, Ryan. Super. So uh, my hopes are that because um, last year we got the focus was on the Xbox One X. So they kept on talking about the hardware and how much powerful it is at the power, most powerful console. Well, that's fine and great. You got that out of the way now. I, I don't think you can rely on that again. We got to see some games now coming here. Um, and what I really hope for is is that they they actually do something with their rare properties they own. 
I I don't want to see a thieves. I want a banjo game or I want a conquer game. Give me something like that. They've been Phil's been teasing every year, like with a with a battle toads pin. Every year he comes up with like or a shirt. So give me something you apparently like these properties. Do something with them, even if it's that rare making them. Give them to someone who's going to make something. That's my hope is that they acknowledge one of the classic rare properties, you know, and it's a game and it's you know that's that's my hopes. It doesn't have to be a game that comes out next year. I want a classic rare game coming out. Uh, And and a lot of my predictions is we won't hear Halo Six this year. There will be hey one at a time, one at a time, buddy. That's, That's my prediction. That's my hope and my prediction. So okay. Do you, do you want me to skip you on the next turnaround then? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. That was it. <laughs> sorry. Skip Josh, you on, so. Josh, a hope or a prediction? You can do them both now, I guess, if you want. Okay. Well, I was going to say they just, my hope is they bring something good. That's, that's all I care about. Like, bring something new too that we never heard of, a new IP, just something. Like, this is, I feel like this is the one uh, conference that has the most opportunity in my head. Because we kind of know what's going to go on. There's been little rumors here and there, but we're not 100% sure what they're doing. And I just hope they hit us over the head with a lot of first party things that make me say, hey, I want to go play my Xbox this year and next year. That's all I want. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's your hope. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to go with, I uh, will predict that we get a Fable announcement that Fable is coming back. Um, that's my that's my prediction. P one. Uh, I have my second prediction uh, is that we will see Nintendo on stage at the Microsoft conference, either uh, being mentioned by name or shown in a in a reel. There will be mention of Nintendo on their stage. Something they are working on something together. They're going to talk about it at Microsoft. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, oh, is it Ryan's turn? Go talking? ahead. I gave mine. All right, I'm <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I was going to say, I think that if you watch the early Cuphead trailers, there are m- multiple bosses that they didn't use in the final release. So I think there's going to be a boss pack for Cuphead announced. It's going to be mm-hmm. like a mini DLC with three to four new bosses, something like that, maybe a new land. Interesting. Mm-hmm. A complete yeah. edition? A complete edition, yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's my that's my prediction. So Okay. I like that. Uh, then I will close out the predictions with uh, a fable. Let's go with the. I don't know if this overlaps a little bit on what Ryan said, but uh, I think that uh, some kind of tease that Perfect Dark is coming back um, will happen. I. That's a hope and. I'm going to say prediction at the same time. That so. would be a good, that would fall in my category. So I, I like it. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So uh, that is uh, what we've got going into tomorrow. Again, we will be on at about 5:40. Is what we're estimating uh, Eastern time PM. Uh, shortly after the Xbox show wraps. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and give you guys uh, your opportunity to let people know where we can find you. We'll start with Josh. Where can we find you if we want to hear more from you? Uh, main place is Frantic Thoughts Podcast. It's on all, every podcast service you can mostly think about. And uh, the, the Twitter's Frantic Society. So that's where you can find me. Excellent. Ryan, where can we find you if we want to hear more from you? Twitter, it's Rocket Sauce. Boom. Okay. Sean? You can find me on Twitter at Cartridge Bros. Excellent. And you can find me on Twitter at Musty Hobbit. Uh, we'll be, I'm sure, talking all about uh, what we have seen here. And as the coming days uh, hit us with more and more press conferences, we've got, we've got plenty on deck for you. So uh, I want to thank everyone who has taken the time out of the day to come watch us talk about some stuff. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, let us know if you want to just drop me a line. Let, let us know how things are going uh, with this. Uh, obviously, when we don't do one massive show, we can take some time to tinker with some things. So uh, I'm going to get more uh, more long-winded here than I need to. Thank you for coming by. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Uh, and again, we, we will be back to talk all things Microsoft and the hopefully abundance of games that they have to talk about. Um, we'll see you guys later. Have a good night.